Hi everybody, I hope you had a good weekend. Welcome back to Let's Really Ghost Thief 2. Today's mission is blackmail. Uh, as you can see, I've already done my practice run. So let's load up the save from the end of the bank, skip the movie, which, as always, is on the playlist separately, and look at our objectives. It is late at night and the sheriff is most likely asleep in his bedroom suite on the third floor of his mansion. Find your way there and get him out of bed. You must confront Gorman Truert with the recording. Use it to blackmail him and get the information that you want. The sheriff has caused you lots of trouble. Take some of Truert's possessions to make up for all the hardship that he has caused you. Get 1100 loot. You must get away to a safe location when your business at the sheriff's mansion has been concluded. Even though everyone loyal to the sheriff deserves to feel your wrath, it's better not to create more problems than you already have. Don't kill anyone. Now, at the outset, let me say that it is possible to supreme this mission. It requires certain loot to be skipped. It's also possible to perfect thief it. I will be doing the latter, like I usually do. I will point out the places where you can skip loot and maintain supreme ghost status, if that's more your inclination. There are a couple of places where I don't think he's updated his main website yet, but he did post on the IDOS forums. I will have to thank Latremus for showing me that certain things I thought were impossible actually are possible after all. I'll credit him every time that happens. He and I are at the same place now. It's kind of fun. It's almost like we're playing through together, but I'm the only one who does videos, which is unfortunate for you because I do think he's a better player than me, but you're stuck with me. Say la vie. As always, we will skip purchases. No need for any of that crap. Well, I don't really know what happened just then, but that's okay. You start off here facing the sheriff's mansion. Let's look at our map. So, there are four houses out here before we infiltrate Truard Estate proper, and we'll need to hit all of them. They all have some loot, and I have to tell you, outside Truard Estate is a lot harder than pretty much anything we'll find on the inside, but what may have been mentioned in the briefing is there's a crack in the wall around here. The map doesn't really accurately show where it is because the passage routes you all the way along here to the back, and then you can take a swim in this, which the map doesn't really clearly show it, but it's a river, and then you can get to the back of the mansion that way. Here we've got a detailed map of the basement, and in what seems odd to me, we even have maps of the secret areas. This bottom part is the basement proper. These stairs lead up to the kitchen. This is a secret room, and this is a secret room. Why they're on the map, I don't know, but they are. Here we've got the first floor. We see there's a great hall. This is another place that'll be pretty tough to clear, but the rest of the mission is actually pretty easy. We've got a chapel, a ballroom, servant quarters, mess hall, kitchen, dining room, guard quarters, back foyer. On the second floor, the great hall extends up two floors. There's a weapons room, a pool, and a game room. The game room has one of the best conversations in the entire Thief series. I'm looking forward to showing it to you again. The third floor just has Truert's bedroom suite and a guest bedroom suite, and there's an attic above all that connected by a roof section with a walkway on it. And finally, our notes page. So, let's get rolling. I'm gonna start from the north and just move south with these houses, so wait until you see the archer get clear, wait until the watchers are turned away. Be wary of the archer patrolling on the other side of the wall, and you're able to just mantle up and over. So, do it. <sighs> no problem. This is another mission where the designers decided it would be awesome to have zero ambient light, so there are places where it's very, very difficult to see, and I'm sorry for that. This first pickpocket is not a big deal. I'm just gonna wait until she cycles around, and then there's a bright patch here we have to creep through because there's a there's a guard down at the end of the street, so to avoid alerts. Like seeing things oops. To avoid alerts, we'll have to carefully creep through that bright patch to get up to the sweet spot. Well, I say the sweet spot. There's another patch of shadows. You've got longer than you think, though, because her patrol is pretty long. So then from here, you want to move up to what I call the sweet spot, as far up as you can go without getting spotted. Then you can rush out and grab her arrows. No big deal. I thought I saw... 
Well, if I had grabbed him on my first right click, I would have had it, but you see the idea here. No problem. <clears throat> That's our first of 23 pickpockets. And we can get them all without any first alerts. So we'll creep back through the bright patch as soon as she turns around. And then we will enter this first house through that window. This be a cushier job than a private car today. That's what I know. Sure, it's just as bad as this. There we go. Do a real save with with that handled. And let's go tackle the house. So just open the window, and then when she's gone, you can just jump right in. Well, theoretically you can. I've done it before. I wonder if crouching might help. You know what's funny is I had no trouble with this on my practice run. But. Okay, doesn't matter, there's another way in. Just head around behind the house. I'm sorry it's so dark, they set ambient light to zero. But open up the back door. When you're in, just make sure you crouch and creep and you'll be fine. So here, there's a vase in the first room, worth 50. In the kitchen, you can find a bottle of wine, worth another 50, brings our total to 100. There's the good one. If you want it, in a crate upstairs, you can find a rope arrow. The sleeper's also up there, and he will wake up if you pick open the chest with that rope arrow in it. So... Well, getting the rope arrow is itself a supreme bust, because you don't need it, but his first alert that wakes him up would also be a supreme bust. So, let's get back to where we started. Hope she doesn't see us. As it's weird. There's only one little patch of actual shadow that you land in. Anyway, open that window. This time I am able to just get into the extremely dark house. I'll try to give really detailed directions in these dark spots since it's so hard to see. In this north, in this room, on the ground level, in the northeast corner, you can find another green vase under an end table. It's only worth 25, so it brings our total to 125. If you creep to the south, you'll get into better lighting. Just go past the kitchen. There's some food in there if you want it, but that's all. On his desk, we have reading material. Dearest Stephanie, I just thought I would take a break from all of my distractions to write you a little letter letting you know how much I love you. I know I have been very busy lately and haven't had as much time for you as I would like. The 18-hour days I'm putting in at the warehouse are killing me, but I am learning so much from the mechanists. They are a little arrogant, but they have a vision I want to be a part of. They are beginning to accept me, which means a lot to me. I've had to work very hard to prove myself to them, but I know that in the end, all of my hard work will pay off and we will both benefit from it. Thank you for being my inspiration and thank you for being so understanding. Our love is the most important thing in my life and when the Mechanist's project is done, you will once again be the center of my universe. I love you, Akeem. So put that back on his desk. In the money box, there's a ring worth 100, brings our total to 225. And before we leave, we need to head upstairs. So head back to the north. Stairs head up to the east. Be careful because he has windows and the watchers can see you through those windows. You certainly don't want that. So stay flush with the stairway and you should be fine. Move back to the also the northeast corner of the second floor and get the gold candlestick off the desk worth 50 brings your total to 275 so now if we creep down again we can go out the other side of his house we just have to be careful about the archer 
patrolling this section of the streets. So we open his window. If you stand up and run, Garrett can ascend that step silently. Drop out beside the house and close the window. Now, first, mantle up onto the south wall. You're shadowed here, so wait until you see the archer leave and drop down. Creep up to the sweet spot. I've adopted this term from uh, from the archives. I've been reading some of the older ghost reports. The sweet spot. When I say that, it's as far up as you can get without triggering an alert. So I'm not in it yet, but what we need to do is they can hear us, so we have to wait till they're away, but hopefully they are. We need to get that gate open without any comments, which I think we did pull off that time, and get back here. Now I'm gonna do a real save. I tried this move for, well, not that long. I wasn't as patient as I should have been. I gave it maybe 20, 30 minutes to get her pickpocket. If we get out our compass, just through the gate, I mean immediately north, if you squeeze to the east, there's a dark corner there. I always thought I'd be able to get her arrows if I got into that corner, but the problem was... Even if I timed the watchers and the two patrollers who can see me, I always drew comments from the stationary guard. But, Clotramus has said it is possible to make this move, so I'm gonna try it. Of course, I failed at timing the watchers. If you're, if you're not a supreme ghoster... Okay, we have to wait, I guess. If you're not a supreme ghoster, by the way, then that power box right there will turn off the street lights and turn off the washers for normal ghost mode, making things much easier. Of course, Supreme Ghost doesn't allow that. Oh. I just need to figure out the timing before I do anything else. Okay, the watchers are actually turned away almost immediately. The patrols favor me too, but... I have to move faster. See that, but I can't move that fast because Benny heard me. Oh heck, that wasn't so bad. I'm gonna listen carefully for settling remarks before I do anything else. Wow, that was a lot easier than I thought, I guess. I guess it's just the magic of believing it's possible. So anyway, from here we should be able to get her arrows pretty easily. Let's just find the sweet spot. Who's there? Yeah, you, you heard the first alerts there, so let's find that sweet spot. What was that? I get a feeling it might actually be farther over here. Or maybe it's right here. Who knows? No, that first alerts the watchers, so... Okay. Now this part, after getting to this shadow, this is all the method from Clotrebus's report, so good job to him. So if we find the sweet spot here, what was that? Okay, we're we're just about in it. We should be able to lean out and get her arrows when she's on her way north. <laughs> Perfect. That's two out of twenty-three pickpockets. Now we need to get back here. Do another real save with this halfway accomplished. So 
And we need to wait till she's headed away. Wait till the watchers are turned. Creep out. Shut the gate. And then move back to the Better shadows. Be the sergeant checking up. Okay, didn't quite have enough time there. And then, run back to the shadows, and we're in the clear. Thanks, Clotramus, I didn't think that was doable, but... As always, he has raised the bar and proved me wrong. So, let's clear out the third house. No real problems here, just move over to the door. This is, there is one fairly unique thing about this little house, which I'll show you. Be careful not to make noise, but uh, you have a guy who's asleep sitting at his desk. How many of you has that happened to? On the desk are two copper coin stacks, which five each bring our total to 285. On this little table is a statue worth 15, brings the total to 300. And then, make sure you creep on the tile. And I apologize in advance, the attic is another one of those ridiculously dark spots. In each of the attic's corners, you can find a flare. And I guess that's why the ambient light is zero. They were trying to encourage us to use their flares, but... Keep creeping up here, and again in the northwest corner of his attic, there's another statue worth another 15, brings our total to 315. Pretty easy. The truth is, on that pickpocket, the key is to move a little bit faster than I was willing to do, because I knew Benny wouldn't spot me if I crept, but... Creeping never gave me enough time with the watchers. But if you crouch, hold down shift, and move sideways, that actually moves you a little bit faster than walking forward, just enough to make it in there. Again, thanks to Clotramus for figuring that out. Now, here is another place where I had problems, but... Clotremus has told me that it's quite possible. Over this wall, there is... Here, let me show you on the map. There's a fourth house. This spot right here is another street. The street doesn't go this way. It goes this way. Here, at the end of the street, is a stationary guard facing down here, and there's an archer patrolling back and forth. I was never able to sneak through this spot to get behind the house into the shadows without at least getting a first alert from the stationary guard. But, Clotramus says he has, there's no problem at all, he's had no problems at all. Right so, maybe I just need to try a little harder. I thought I saw hey, something. Look there. One thing to note, one thing to note is that you have to be as close to the gate as possible in order to mantle up in shadow. So I'm going to wait for our swordsman here to turn back around before I do that. Because I'm right in the sweet spot with him. Any closer and I'd get a comment. Who's there? What was that? I still wasn't close enough to the gate. Try again. Okay, up here we're good. So I'm gonna wait until her back is turned and I'm gonna go ahead and do another real save up here since this was a trouble spot for me. Slide down into this shadow here. Think we got trouble? See? Mm. Let's try moving faster. Huh. Did you know 
See, I get a first alert there. I don't know. Who's there? Let's try hugging the house. Hey, what was that? Actually creeping when I get to the corner. Not quite, but I can't, the problem is, I can't tell if it's the archer turning around first or the stationary guard first. Hey, look there. Because either way, they always comment at the same time, so maybe I just need to move a tad bit faster. There we go. Oh good. All these areas I have trouble, it is possible after all. Obviously we need to pick her arrows, but that shouldn't be so tough. Because she comes down here. I think if I just wait for her to turn, I don't want to get in view of the stationary one again though. I saw something. Okay, I can do it without a comment from the stationary one. That's all I need to know. I'm on grass, so I'm actually free to run. As long as I don't get in sight of anybody. So. Okay, that was a little too much. But uh, What was that? I'm seeing how this will come together. Something there? have to balance my forward rush so I don't get spotted by either one. Ah, uh, she saw me that time. Who's there? Interestingly, she sees me if I lean around the corner, but not if I come all the way out. How does that even work? I guess the more relevant question is how did I avoid those the first few times? Something there? Because now she's seeing me every time. What was that? Okay, if I'm crouching by the time I get to the corner, she doesn't see me, but... That ma oh, I almost had it. Okay, so she doesn't see me if I'm crouching. That means I have to go fast, fast, fast. Before I hit the corner. I almost had it that one time, did y'all notice? It's the knowledge that it's possible. Oops, forgot to crouch. So many things to remember. Run, crouch, lean, grab. Too slow. Run, crouch, lean, grab. Too slow. Run. Something there? Too much run. Forgot to crouch. I like seeing things. The problem is we can't just open the front door and lean out and grab them. That would be easy. Thought I saw. Moved a little too soon. <laughs> well, let me let me just see if maybe I can come at her from the other side and get a little bit better result.
don't see how that would be possible. Yeah, no. This side is definitely the best bet. There we go. Got it. Alright. That is three of 23 pickpockets. Good. So head into this house through the back door. It is not empty, even though its occupant doesn't even snore. As we head upstairs... Start creeping in the, again, in the northwest corner. They really like the northwest corner. Just carefully creep past the sleeping pagan, nab his candlestick. <laughs> Worth 50, brings our total to 365. We're now ready to get onto Truett's grounds. How do you like that? So back out the back door. Close it. The back door is on the far south side. I know it's dark. It's gonna be dark for a while because you see these bushes? There's a, the crack in the foundation which leads to this passage is behind them, but once we're in the passage, it's dark until we get to the other side. You can only really navigate by using the skyline above you and seeing the, uh, the rocks, you know, where they brush up against the ceiling. So eventually we'll hit a wall as we run up. When here it is, when that happens, it's time to crouch because there's a tunnel through this wall. Just kind of have to feel our way around until we find it. It's almost like playing with the monitor off. It's so dark. There it is. Move through that tunnel. And then right when you get clear of it, before you really move on, turn to your right, which is the south. <laughs> you can mantle up over a wall here to get the first of six secrets. It's also completely dark here, but we're in a graveyard. There are three graves already. Here lies Iblis Truert Jr., beloved son. Here lies Lita Truert, beloved wife and mother. Here lies Iblis Truert Sr., beloved husband and father. And then we have a fresh hole in the ground. I have a bad feeling about this. Next to the hole, there are three flares and a shovel. So there's a freshly dug <sighs> grave out here. <sighs> Ominous foreshadowing. The good news, as you try to find your way back over the wall, is that nothing out here can hear you. So you just kind of have to feel your way back through, and then continue heading east, until finally you see the water in front of you. which you need to jump into, swim north, surface on the east side to start, and really just be happy that you can see again. I'm sure the video's even worse, but it's pitch black playing it. I think the designers wanted to force you to use flares, but Supreme Ghost doesn't allow consumables. First things first, wait for this guy to patrol across the bridge and then turn back around. He has a key that we actually do need. So we'll hold on to it. Running forward from here, you have to wait a good long while before you can avoid a comment. About halfway across the bridge works for me. Then crouch down, follow him. As you get even closer... <gasps> oh, see, I got a comment. I was gonna say, as you get even closer, you have to hit shift. But I didn't hit it soon enough. Of course, if he gets all the way to the grass, you can just get up and run. He doesn't turn around until he gets to the top of those stairs, so you've got a pretty long window. 
So if we gra we'll grab his balcony key. That's our fourth of 23 pickpockets. Now, you want to hop into the well, swim down to the bottom, and for whatever reason, your ambient light goes up once you're underwater. There are two pairs of coins at the bottom of the well, worth 20 each. They bring our total to 405. So as you, you can probably hear him coming back across the bridge. We're gonna wait for him to turn around and then follow him into that back courtyard. to get off to the side and hide again. The shadows are closer on the north side, so wait here till he's crossing the bridge, then slip in behind him. <clears throat> now we can't open the gates leading to the rest of the exterior. The reason being, they will, the noise of the gates will spawn comments from the guards. So, oops. If we want to get all of the pickpockets, which I do, we'll have to traverse the yard by means of rope arrows. And you'll want to keep those quiet too, so don't pull the drawstring all the way back. <clears throat> I don't, I doubt, very much doubt I got that high enough, but I guess I did after all. Retrieve that arrow, we'll need it, and then hopefully we can slide down and end up in- Oh! Alright, well it's not going to be that simple apparently. Amazed at the I'm amazed at the lack of shadows up here. Let, let, let me show you why we can't just take the gate. Listen. Mm. Opening the gate gets a comment from the guards. So Which actually makes sense to me, because those mm. gates are pretty damn noisy. Let's move up here and figure out what we can do. I wonder if I can slide down. In the name of Sheriff! That didn't work. I want to do a real save out here so I can start quick saving on top of the wall. Save a little time. So yes. Bridge guy spotted us that time. So let's just be to put in the hours if you want the promotions. Careful. You don't get Is that you? Who saw me that time? Strange. Well somebody did. I don't know what it is, but I know there's got to be a way to get off this wall. J 
Jordan, that you? Well, bouncing off the guard. Well, it seems hilarious. Triggers a comment. <clears throat> In the oh. name of shit. But maybe if I position it right. If you want the promotions, you oh. mess with the. See, it's actually the noise of the landing that's oh. the cops. alerting him. We need to avoid that bounce, and hopefully we can <clears throat> make it so we bounce into the corner oh. in the name of shit. instead of out in front of the guard. You oh. messed with. Okay. I think the trick was to come off the wall this way. Got to get the sheriff to. Okay, okay, got it, got it, got it. Now I just have to worry about the bridge guard. Good. Perfect. So, let's grab his arrows. That's our fifth of 23 pickpockets. Got to put in the hours if you want the promotions. You don't get the gold bars until you got the flat feet. <sighs> so you see the patroller there. I'm just creeping here. Getting tired of going to these poor try to avoid a first Didn't alert. Much but be hungry. When do Who'd I see there? See if I get going too fast. <laughs> it's very dark out here too, but you know, not dark enough to keep us completely hidden. Of course, even though we can't see a thing, but at the moment. I am creeping to the southeast, and I'm going very slowly, using the wall to help me slow myself down. Okay, it looks like we're far enough away that we can speed up now. Good news! I'm gonna wait for the, uh, and make sure that didn't trigger an alert. Wait for the patroller to turn around, and then I think we can use the gate on this side. Which is definitely good. It'll make things a lot less complicated. Because there's no one standing on the other side. Oh, well, let's get this gate open. I'm going to listen for settling remarks. Hearing none, I'll close the gate behind me. And there was much rejoicing. So we're on the south side of the manor's exterior now. I'm purely just creeping around to get pickpockets. This is all optional if you don't care about your pick count. This one, as you can see, will be significantly easier to get because there's a ladder. And this, I think that gate we can also open without alerting anyone. So we can use the ladder to get his picks, get his arrows or hers, I can't remember, and get back down. Once we have them, we should be able to use the gate to keep moving. Problem is, we're well lit enough out here that she'll probably first alert if I move at the wrong time. I want to get her as she walks from south to north. Just pop up to the top of the ladder and grab it before she gets out of range. Oh. What? I misjudged her position. But I also really misjudged how high I can get. Hmm. Hmm. Could this be a 
Cause your job, I'm a private guard duo. There we go. Six out of nine, or er, six out of twenty-three pickpockets. So there is a swordsman patrolling on the other side. You can hear that he's close. So I'm gonna wait for him to get away. And wait for the archer to not be directly over the gate. Who's making that noise? I don't know what she heard. Listen for settling, hear none. Now we need to get it closed. Again, listen for settling to make sure there was no first alert. Hearing none, we shall move on. We're coming up to Truett's front porch now. Let's wait for the swordsman to be away. We need to get across it without any first alerts. And there's also another patrolling archer up here with a pickpocket for us. Okay, I think if I move more slowly, I can avoid that. Okay, I need to move even slower. That's fine, that's fine. Who is seeing? He's full enough now. Hey, did you see someone over there? Okay, let me try a different tactic. Let me get on the side. Let me get farther away from the torch. Let's see if that helps. Have to get good timing. Nobody here. better be taffing around down here. Uh, looks like nothing. Okay, that will work. I just have to not move with the patroller that close to me. <clears throat> so as you can see, sometimes just a few feet of distance between you and a light source can make all the difference. So if we creep up the west side instead of the east side we can get to the shadows which I was able to verify are safe without comment from any guards his arrows bring us to 7 out of 23 pickpockets way to go So just creep along the outer wall, even though it's dark, that's what I'm doing. Staying as far away from the front porch as possible. Go ahead and do a real save now, because that was pretty tense. That's the thing I like about Supreme Ghosting. A lot of people have said it just seems too hard, too crazy, too restrictive, too forced, too much of a contrivance. All that, and it is very difficult, but the great thing about it is it, over there. it keeps the tension the entire mission in places where there otherwise wouldn't be any. So when you get to this area, it's actually necessary to move toward the front porch and away from the front gate itself. I'm trying to get in this little nook so the patroller has room to get by, but he might bump me anyway. I sure hope he doesn't. <clears throat> but as you can see, the main gate is pretty well lit. That's the other side of that patroller watcher festival we dealt with earlier. 
And the porch is now the source of our shadow. <coughs> I hope he doesn't bump me. Okay, I'm good. <coughs> so, once you get flush with the porch like that, your shadow's a lot stronger. Until, of course, it comes time to move out the other side. See that? Over there! Hmm. Let's try rushing. <coughs> if creeping doesn't work, rushing just might be the answer, as crazy as it seems. So we're gonna have to creep up to the other side to stay away from the torch again. There's an archer patrolling the yard itself out here. Obviously, we want her pickpocket. But that time we cleaned up those cesspools of filthy taverns. She's, I think she's going to alert to us. Cut your throat as soon as they look at you. Find bars. That's the best thing for them. Oh, good, good, good. I think Who's we're... there? Dang it! Thought I saw. Okay, let's back up a little. What was that? Garrett, don't t get your arrows out when I quick load. That's just stupid. Have to back up a little bit <coughs> to avoid that alert. Now let's try and get out behind her. Now let's. What? What I was trying to do was rush up into the shadow. There we go. Much better. So from here, it should be a simple matter to get her arrows. You will notice there's a sleeper on the ground out here. Must have been quite a party the sheriff threw. But as soon as she's clear, we'll just rush out behind her, nab her arrows, get to the other side. Who's there? Move too fast. Okay. Noted. Who's there? Still moving too fast. Maybe we'll rush a little less. Get on the ground. What was that? See, we can we just want to get to those shadows, but we kind of have to track where she is in her patrol to do so successfully. Done. Good. So that is eight out of 23 pickpockets. Now we want to head back to the east. Begin moving back towards the back of the mansion, which is where we'll actually break in. That gate is perfectly usable as long as the archer's far enough away. So up here, you'll it should be a obvious. We have another guard, another archer, up on a balcony. We'll do the same trick with him we did with the one on the other side. Just rush up the ladder, nab his arrows as he passes by. I'm going to do a real save here because this has been a lot of work for some broadhead arrows we're not going to use, but I am a completionist. We'll want to get him moving from north to south because he's closer to our ladder there. Easier to pickpocket, I think. Well, possible to pickpocket even. What's that? But we need to be farther down the ladder. Because he can swing out and see us. So he's approaching now. There it is. That is our ninth 
of 23 pickpockets. So, as he's farther away... We should be able to open this gate without any alerts. And close it. I'll listen for settling comments, just to make sure there was no alert. Seems there was not. This is good. This is good. Now, we'll just use the outer wall to creep up on this lady. getting in the range where she'll see me if I move too fast. So, slow creep, slow creep, up the eastern wall. <coughs> Again, sincere apologies for the darkness. Not a lot I can do except I could crank the gamma all the way up, but that'd be cheating. Because it's supposed to be dark. <coughs> Lean forward, grab her arrows. That is our tenth of 23 pickpockets. So now creep back down along the wall. Just a little ways. We can't open her gate. That's the gate. I saw. That's the gate that goes back to the back courtyard. But if we open it, she'll comment. So. <sighs> We'll have to use another rope arrow, but the good news is this particular rope drop is a lot simpler than the first one. You'll see why. I wonder if I'm far enough away to speed up. Yes, good. Okay, I think we're safe from everybody now. As long as we stay in the shadows, obviously. So, even though it's a blind shot, you want to get on top of the eastern wall. It's not exactly blind. You use the skyline. Put your rope. And then dive in. But you have to time your dive with the archer, so... The way to cope with the darkness making this shot is to zoom in and use the skyline. <sighs> and you can hop up on the rope. Save at the top. Don't mantle up on the wall until he's far enough away not to see you moving. <sighs> Make sure you grab your rope. Dive into the river. And then come back to this spot. Might feel redundant, but we're richer than we were when we left. We got six extra pickpockets for our trouble. Now that we've Made our full circle of the outside, we're ready to head in. <laughs> we need to wait until he's headed out so we can slip in behind him. to mantle up here and get into this shadow you're safe here your balcony key will open either of these doors 
Don't go in through the kitchen. You want to enter through the back foyer. The reason for that is... There's a conversation in the kitchen. And... The issue is that there are two servants who will see you. They're right there if you open the kitchen door. So you have to go in through the back foyer. And... I like to get to this shadow. If we look at the map, you can sort of see a loop here. There are two patrollers on this floor. They both walk the same route and they're pretty equally spaced. If we start here in the back foyer, they move clockwise around a loop through the dining room, through the kitchen, down this hallway, they turn right and skip the ballroom, go up this central hallway, and then move back through the back foyer. One of them has a pickpocket we need. He has a metal gear we'll eventually use to get to the second floor. And this is as good a place as any to wait for him and grab it. You have to be careful of the stationary guard. You can see her pivoting over in the dining room. Because she can spot you here in the back foyer if you're not shadowed. There's our metal gear. That's our 11th of 12 pickpockets. Which is always good news. Now, I want to get into this fountain because it has eight sets of coins in it. I want to pick up all of them. Just be careful because it's a tile brush. After picking up all eight, my loot total is now 445. So you see this guard now. I actually want to go clockwise. I find that easiest. Who's there? I find that easiest because it keeps us with the flow of the patrollers instead of against it. If she'll turn around, there's a very nice shadow right through the dining room door we can squat in and be safe from everybody. So when you get to this shadow, it's worth making a real save, because this is a perfectly safe spot. So the first thing I want is that vase on the table. So I'm going to wait for her to turn again, and then I'm going to go grab it. That is not the way I wanted her to turn. But oh well. There we go. <coughs> Who's making that noise? Then if you can, you want to go ahead and fly in behind her to get her arrows. <sighs> Once you get right next to her, you kind of have to start creeping, but it's quite possible to get around her into that little hallway. Well, there's an easier way to get her arrows, though. I tell you what. I'm going to get the vase, and then I'm going to go tackle the dungeon in the basement. Okay, so get the vase. Come on, Garrett. Thought I saw Over there! Oh, I hate it when he does that. Although in his defense, it's brushed kind of weird. That vase is worth 50, it brings my total to 495. Now I'm going to wait for her to turn again, and then I'm going to head into the fireplace. There's a switch I can hit, which opens a secret passage. The switch does have the side effect of extinguishing the fire, so that's arguably a supreme ghost bust, but I'm going to...